Ben Wally, baby. We're coming for you, me and Uncle Lee, baby. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. <laughs> oh, here we go. Going to Maine. Actually, we're already in Maine. Show me around town, yeah. Okay, Brad, we get it. You like fishing. You're gonna go fishing with a great guy named Ben in Maine. It's so much fun. Catch all the fish. <laughs> nope, wrong. Well, not all wrong. I do love fishing. Ben is great, but that's not what makes him a legend in my eyes. What sets him apart are his skills as a fly designer and his conservation efforts to protect the fish that he loves the most, the striped bass. If you're not a fly fishy person, you might be thinking, what the heck is that shiny hairy thing? Don't people just skewer worms on hooks to catch fish? Use lures? Use jig of buggers? The answer is sometimes. But fly fishing is arguably the purest form of the sport. You ain't fooling those bass by dangling a Swedish fish in front of them. Well, you might sometimes, but this is an elite fly designer. These ain't your grandpappy's woolly buggers, I'll tell you that. His flies are the results of years of observation, practice, refinement, and love. Ben meticulously crafts each fly with real fish in mind, and it's not just about matching the colors and patterns. It's even more about the movement, the action that each fly creates in the water, so it swims, darts, turns, just like the live fish it was inspired by. Will it fool the mighty striped bass? Well, the proof is in the pudding, my friends. Ben's flies check all the boxes, and that's probably why his monthly fly release sells out in minutes, sometimes selling for a hundred bucks a pop. Simply put, these flies are legendary. So come spend the weekend with me and the man behind the flies. Let's learn how he makes these little masterpieces and see if I can even come remotely close to tying one and catching one of my own. Then we're gonna put these flies to the test out by Great White Rock. Me and Ian have a little challenge going on. If I catch at least three fish on my fly, Ian's going overboard. And if I can't catch three, well, no luck for me. There's a reason why they call it Great White Rock, so I'm hoping my fly actually works. Well, Ben, thank you again, man, for, for inviting me up here. Of course. And, uh, you know, I've been looking forward to this ship for a while and uh, you know, just digging into the fly fishing. And more importantly, I know we're, we're setting up tomorrow, the weather's looking good. Yep. Right. I mean, uh, you've been out this morning. You had pretty good. Fingers crossed. Things are looking pretty fishy, and I yep. hate to even say it the day before. But, It'll be um, good. Yeah, we're gonna hang out a little bit tonight, man. I'm really looking forward to seeing, you know, your craft and passion of tying flies, and then being able to hopefully show me yep. where I could tie a fly, and then maybe you know, hopefully use tomorrow and try to catch, yep. catch a striped bass, man. I mean, I've seen some of your work, man, and it goes, you know, so they, it looks like a you know a piece of art as much as it does, you know, uh, an uh, an active, you know, active not the right word, but like a... I call a, it functional art. Functional art, perfect. Yep. But I mean, where you can actually go ahead and use it. And it, it's, it's poetry in the water, some of these beautiful flies. You think I could maybe I'd get into it a little bit? You think you, you think you can teach me how to tie something uh, we'll fishable? Try. We'll she try. might not be the prettiest, but she'll be fishable. <laughs> we'll do it. We'll see. We'll, we'll see. do we'll it. See. We'll see. We'll make something. I, I believe in you. <laughs> oh, thank you. You're the first. <laughs> you are the teacher. I am the student. And I will do my best to listen and follow directions. Yeah. So we're going to grab the bobbin. Oh, God. Yep. So pull out like two and a half, three inches, oh, just enough that. so you can grip it. Okay. And then I normally just hold it, and with your other hand, so your right hand. You're grabbing the metal, the the silver. Yep. Okay. Right, right here. here, and you don't want to like hold it. You want it to be able to flow. Like okay. When you pull it, it spins. Yep. So you want just to hold it and be. Three hours later. I think that'll hunt. Dude, she's hunty. <laughs> Strip a little slower, Brad, a little what? slower. You know, that's, they're gonna gulp those babies right up. Good Come stuff. On. I mean, you said, thanks, man. And you said this, I mean, you were catching them. Yeah. <laughs> Today. Yeah. They're done. They're done, game over, pal. No, you know, but all, all jokes aside and the fish gods, we're gonna try our hardest. Yep. I know you're dialed, I'm gonna do my best to listen to instructions Good. and use a little bit of my fishing intuition and minor fly fishing background, very minor. Yeah. Um, that should yeah. do it though. 
Let me tell you something. <laughs> Lean forward. Let me tell you something. Yeah, there we go. The captain says 4.30, you better be there waiting, ready, with your little lunchbox in your hand, 4.20, 4.25, right? Now, 4.35. 4.30 means we're getting on the boat. Let's go, babe. All right, all right, all right. All right, right going to work on my cast a little bit. Stiff little in elbows. I'll listen to the cap. I'll listen. A little slower, a little faster. That's my... <clears throat> That's how it works. Yeah, I hope so. Boy, I hope so. Look nice morning. Look at that. Nice morning out. Not too froggy. Not too what? Not too froggy. Uh, for, um, not too foggy. I say foggy. But right now we're looking for, since it's so shallow, you can see V wakes or tails sticking out. If I see something, I'll tell you what time, direction, um, distance. Making me nervous. Perfect, perfect. Okay. Start stripping. Strip, 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 strip. Short little strips. Oh, it's got the muscle fish. <laughs> oh, Brad. The intensity. What'd you catch, buddy? We got, um, looks like a little scallop shell, bud. Oh, you on it? Cast. 11. I'm spinning us at the same time, so. I'm gonna spin you and start casting. Yep. Feathering line out with yep. my hand. See how I'm doing that? Yep. You're, what what happens is you do more effort than is needed so you have you just want to get that most of the head out whether it's like that and then one back I'm not even letting line out and when you let go it just wants to pull more line as you go all right now you're good yeah see that Already better. yeah you got 10 more feet on that guy. yeah for sure Ooh, I'm on. Yes. Let him run. Let him run. Oh yeah, let me hear that. They're fighting so hard this year. Like even 25 inch fish are fighting like 30 inches. That might be a good one though. That, it's that lucky fly. Yeah, I know. I forgot about color. that. Dude, that's a nice fish. All right, I got him. <laughs> what are we thinking, boys? <laughs> we got any one. We got one, buddy. Nice ah. fish cap. Look at the fly right there. Nice fish cap. So on what's down. the moving hand on him, bud? So this one is, I think, entering the big year class, which is the 2015 year class, the big bulk that we need to rebuild the fishery because the fishery is technically overfished right now. Okay. Um, 
So we need to take care of this stock in order to, to rebuild that. Um, so the big one is, you know, they're not built to be hung by their lip. Right. So lifting them up, you don't want to keep them vertical. Um, and then if you, if you want to take a picture with them, the big thing is, you know, get the camera ready. Be ready. And then I can lift it, hold it, snap it, and then reviving it is the big one. So you just fought it. You figure his blood's pumping. Yep, yep. Um, so just spending a minute with him until he kicks off, you know, is a big one. So you know it swam away. So if you're going to lift it up, what? Support the belly a little type yep. of thing? Yeah. So like lift it like that. Yeah. Gorgeous. Isn't that pretty? First fish, First fish caught. And it was, a, it was a gorgeous fish, man. The biggest fi biggest striped bass I ever, well, the second striped bass I've ever caught on a fly. And uh, man, what an awesome fight. You just really feel it with the fly rod. And this year, especially that size, just fight. They just got some power. Above their weight class, for sure. And uh, yeah, first fish on the fly we tied. Not, not a bad morning, boys. Yeah, you still need two more. Though. We still need two more, that's fine. But, you know, and look what's, what's in the background. Shark There's shark right rock there. right there. Uh, seals, shark rocks, videos, I don't know. Let's catch some more fish. We need two more. Oh, I'm on. Yes. Dude, that's a fire one. <sighs> bring this. On that leader. Ooh, we might have a little bigger you size. The, you saw the boat. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What do you say, Uncle Ian? Number two. There it is. Ben Wally fly right here. Yeah, buddy. Yeah. Number two. I need one more. Get the chunks on, baby. Look at that beautiful fish, huh? Gorgeous. He's gonna kick out of here. You catch your breath, buddy, all right? Grab his tail. Yep. Then you can let go of his lip. Yeah. And if you squeeze his tail a little bit, he'll push off when he's ready. Yeah, there you go. You down, give me two. Oh, we need one more tap. I gotta see this handsome bastard get in the water. Frosty. It's about getting cold, bud. Oh, yeah. <laughs> My personal best on the fly. What did you, you think that, that fish was? Probably 25. About 25. 26. About 26 inches. Yep. 27. Yeah. About 38 inches. And not all guys are created equal, but luckily we got we got yeah, a legend, got man. Yeah, heck yeah. <laughs> got us on the fish. Got me to tie a fly. And uh, honestly, couldn't ask for a better day on the water. The game was Brad's got to catch three on on the fly that he tied. I caught two, a little short, no big deal. I'll take a dip. Like I said, I'm a man of my word. Bring me the great white shark rock. I'm, I'm, I'm jumping in and jumping out, right? I ain't doing no freaking acrobatics. I promise you that, Uncle Ian. Last season, there was a great white sitting right right over there, sunning himself. Sunning himself. That sounds lovely. <laughs> or digesting, I think. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Here we go. Here we go. <laughs> Great white rock, baby. <laughs> Wait, man, stay in there. Stay in coming, there. Bud. Stay in there. Camaraderie. Come on, man. <laughs> I'm coming in. Whoa. Oh, oh, <laughs> Alright, let's get out of the water! Captain! I want out, man! Chatting with Ben before and after the trip, he always laughs at the idea of us referring to him as a legend. He doesn't consider himself one. He says the real legends are the pioneers of the sport, the ones who paved the way and are willing to share their wealth of knowledge. Guys like Bob Popovics, Ben's mentor who created the Beast Fly, which Ben has studied and adapted over the years. Folks like the biologists and fishery managers who had the conviction to fight and rebuild the striped bass population when it was literally on the verge of collapse in the 80s. There's no way around it. 
the striped bass fishery is in trouble again. After five years of failed spawns and management slow to enact change, Ben and other members of the ASGA are taking it into their own hands to raise public awareness and engagement to protect these fish. We owe it to the future generations to conserve these fisheries. You don't have to be a politician or a biologist to voice the change. That's what Ben taught me. Folks like you and I, people who love fishing, the everyday just out there with your friends and family, you too can make a change just in how you handle the fish and the way you fish for them. What makes Ben a legend is just this. For someone so talented and gifted in their craft, he's also very humble and giving. He doesn't want to be known for being the best fly tire in the world. He honestly cares more about teaching others how to tie their own flies. Example me. He's not in it to boast or brag about the biggest fish he caught or get the most likes on Instagram. He's more concerned about making sure these fish are protected and preserved for future generations. Fished responsibly so that maybe our kids will have a chance to make some memories outside fishing together. Hell, I don't know, maybe just get a little closer with nature. Have fun and enjoy your life. You know, the good stuff.